Okay, that's the first hurdle. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Really enjoyed hearing all the contributions today. And it's uh, great because I'm going to draw on some of them um, in, in, in our presentation too. So I'm with here today with my uh, great colleague, Becca from Harlow College. And we're going to talk about um, mathematics in context. So it's highly relevant to what's come before. Uh, and in, in particular, using ratio tables to help students make sense of maths problems. So I am, uh, forgive me if there's uh, some um, lack of continuity with the, the slides. I'm in control of the mouse clicker. So uh, Becca's happy to give me a nudge if I'm lagging behind or I'm going too fast. Becca, are you okay? I'm absolutely fine, Michael. What can go wrong? We practiced over and over <laughs> many times, and it was just like clockwork. So I'm yeah, 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 yeah. It will be absolutely fine. Thank you. Okay, thank here you. we go. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. And again, um, thank you for lovely presentations today. So we'll talk about RME and why did we decide to focus on RME. Um, the first of all, uh, it was a great opportunity for us to, you know, understand what what the students really thought when we presented them with the questions. Okay, and uh, it's a great experience for both. Um, great experience for um, students, for learners, and and for the teachers alike. It's really, it's really brought us together to discuss a few things together. It was something that we wanted to them to think rather than just you know do something with numbers, if that makes sense. Um, okay, thank you, Michael. It's. Um, yeah, I've said that is fantastic experience. Uh, I think uh, on top of that as, as well, I'd like to add on here, it, it is something that helped learners to, and before they dived into more formal strategies and approaches, it was better for them to see the questions in context with more familiar context, more familiar approach really. Okay. And using a dialogic approach, um, it's, it was really more informal approach, really dialogic, and helps. We hope they help learners to open up, to make a start, really, and create something we called a learn community of learners. I think that was really key that that we wanted to focus on that the community of learners in that sense. So, what did we? What strategies did we employ to recharge the learners' thinking in the common in the common sense to? To, to start thinking about well, how does that how does that work in in the real context? So we focused on the following strategies: drawing the ratio tables. Now I'd like to um, say a few things very briefly here, and then the next slide will kind of explain why we focused on the ratio tables. Most importantly, so uh, we also talked about well, say what do you see and what else do you know, and always always closing the loop, going back to the context. That was absolutely key to going back to the context scenario for that. Thank you, Michael. So why the ratio tables? Um, it's, it was a fantastic tool for us when we looked at the research done. There's a huge amount of research on ratio tables, the RMA, um, uh, MME has fantastic resources for it. The resources are already available there. So we thought, well, why not? And we thought that would help learners to get started, make the start, say what you see precisely. Um, it's kind of haunts onto what they already know, because we, when we go into the classroom, we have learners, they come in, they're not coming as clean slaves, they're coming, they have the knowledge. So we tapped into the things that they already knew and build on that. It's, it was, it's, it allows for great flexibility and ask them question, but well, what else do you know? And that kind of brings that the confidence out from them. So oh, I also know this. And that gets that gets a conversation going. And we knew we were very confident that was widely applicable to range of topics across the GCSEA. It could be multiplication and division, percentages, ratios, scale factors, and so on. So it was a really wide range of topics that we could use it for. Okay. <clears throat> Right, so what did we do? How did we decide to go forward? Well, we given the pre-intervention questions and to, to understand the proportional reasoning. The questions were designed in a way that it allowed it for a lot of questions. Most of all of the questions, sorry, were, were said in a way 
that catered for the ratio um, for the ratio tables. So we kind of we sorted that from the very beginning. We encourage the students to explain explain their thinking and also if they were not able to answer the questions well, why not what, what made you stuck in there what, what what's stopping you from answering these questions that kind of thing we wanted to get the idea what they thought about those questions and why didn't why couldn't they answer it and also how confident they were we then introduced the learners to ratio tables and how we could apply them in a familiar context the context that we're familiar with um, because that was absolutely key that we should have used that we used the context that we're familiar with. That could be a sharing the sharing the fish and chips or the baguette or anything like that, something that they were familiar with. And we've used exactly identical post-intervention questions for them. And then, and this is absolutely key. And I'd like to bring Michael here in for a second on this one. We we concentrated on teacher as a researcher when we've done the interviews and Michael has done a lot more on this than I have so um, it is also fair to say that personally I was a little skeptical about ratio tables when we started because I haven't had a huge amount of exposure to using the ratio tables so I think I'm one of the persons who, who kind of made a 180 u-turn on using ratio tables and then being a teacher as a researcher and conducting an interview with the students has really really opened my eyes and broaden my approach really to how I deliver the lessons from that from that time. So Michael, if I can bring you back in this one, please. Um, yeah, first of all, I'd say thank you for your honesty, Becca, because um, there's been a theme of refreshing honesty throughout today in all the presentations that I've um, observed, listened to. So that's fantastic. I think for me personally, um, this was the most interesting bit. Selecting responses from the pre-intervention uh, answers and interviewing students uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. Being careful to remain neutral. I'm not talking to them as their teacher. I'm trying to find out as a researcher, what are they thinking? Why did they put down on that answer paper what they put down? And trying to unpick their, their thinking and find some mathematical reasoning. So here are some of, um, here's an example of, uh, can everybody see that? Is that big enough? Yep. Thank you, Mark. So alluding to, to what Becca said before, not sure if this answer is correct. Um, I'm really happy that the student put that down and, um, and when I spoke to this student, I've just got a little excerpt from the, from the conversation. So to me, I, I think this must have been, you can imagine with me talking, it was like a 45 minute interview just on this question. And no matter how many different ways I tried to get this student to go back to the context, it, it, it didn't even feature in his thinking of whether this was a reasonable answer or not. And I found that fascinating. It was, for this student, it was all about being fixated on performing an algorithm because that is what he'd been trained to do at school. And when I asked him, um, kept asking, how, how would you check that that's correct? He just says, well, um, I just do a multiplication. In other words, he was going to do a reverse calculation to try and get back to where he started from. Um, and when this student um, said, said goodbye to me, because he had to go to another lesson, I couldn't keep him all day. He said, um, the boss stop method never lets me down, Michael, apart from today. So moving on, here's an example of a student's um, pre-intervention response. This, um, we've got uh, lovely Serena with us today from Northampton College. This is one of um, Serena's students' responses. And Serena described this student as one of the higher attainers in her class. Um, and it's obviously, well, might not be obvious, but I can confirm the student's got the correct answer. 
but um, I'm sure it's quite familiar seeing all the, the way the student lays out their workings. Um, my, I'm always keen to ask the students to make it easy for the examiner to award marks. So after the teaching um, of the ratio table, this was the student's um, post-intervention response, the same student. We've got what looks like a ratio table here. Um, I'm interested to hear people's comments in the chat, the contrast between the responses. But the student said to Serena that the ratio table helped him organize his thoughts and work out the answer much quicker. Here's another one. Look carefully at the, uh, the student's first line of working uh, that's been scribbled out. It hasn't quite been scratched from the surface of the earth. You can just, as a maths teacher, you can just make out what they're doing there. One remainder six, I think it says, equals 1.6, something like that. But the best bit for me is the honesty of the student. I'm stuck on the method, to be honest. Here is the post-intervention response. And I know Serena and I've had many conversations about encouraging the students to label their ratio tables because it really helps them um, structure their thinking and not make silly mistakes. Often they can switch around the copies made number with the time in seconds. And I've got examples of that. Um, also, we encourage them to annotate their thinking. So you can see how the students gone from six copies made to 30 copies. It's clear that they've used multiplication to do that. What I think is also really useful about this approach, the structure, is that um, in a multi-step question, so in previous presentations, we had um, people talking about AO3, multi-step questions. I think the ratio table is fantastic. The students obviously nervous in the exam, this gives them something to go back to, a point of reference, and it's clear what's going on there. Uh, <clears throat> this is the same student that um, uh, has the bus stop method that never lets him down. So again, there's the honesty at the bottom. He feels he's understood this question. Now, my job as the interviewer was not to make him feel bad about the situation. It was, it was you know, I had to be really careful how, how we dealt with this because I didn't want it to impact on um, his uh, responses to my questions in the interview. So, and this is his post-intervention response. Now, although there isn't a table as such, it's clear it's been organized and the table has been done in invisible ink, obviously, um, and gets full marks. And uh, this is one of my weakest students. So, Serena made a fantastic contribution to this action research. And she said, Michael, we need to include some examples of students using the ratio table way after the, the uh, collection, the post intervention uh, questions were asked. So here's an example from one of um, Serena's students. I'll read out the question just in case you can't see that. Sammy pays 16 pounds for 40 chocolate bars. He sells all 40 chocolate bars for 62p each. Work out Sammy's percentage profit. And the second line says, 
paid £16 for 40, sold 40 for £24.80. So there's obviously no issues with the decimal multiplication there. They understand what the word profit means. Fantastic. And then look in the top right hand corner. The student clearly understands that um, £16 is the starting point, the 100%. And they've used a halving strategy and then a um, divide by 10 strategy to get the 0 0.8 in order to build up to that target. £24.80 and get their 55%. One more example. This one's particularly interesting to me. Again, one of Serena's students. Serena says that she was surprised by this student using the ratio table. Um, she personally would have preferred to use a bar model for a sharing in a ratio question. But I think this is, is, is really shows that the student is confident in their use and has actually applied it. I've got to be honest, it wasn't my first choice either to use a ratio table, but it just gives an idea of how it's showing how the student is organizing their thoughts uh, and, and able to present it um, in a way that makes sense. Oh yes, I forgot the most important bit. This is the quote when Serena interviewed this student using the ratio table. I can see clearly what I need to do next. Okay, what did we learn from our approach? Many students, so this was from the responses to the pre-intervention question, were simply just doing something with the numbers and didn't relate it to the context. There was little evidence of learners attempting to make sense of the mass. They had no facility to check whether it was reasonable or not. Using the ratio tables has helped learners to structure their mathematical reasoning and build confidence. And the use of a familiar context has helped change the classroom environment. And I think that's absolutely key. We, we want them to experience something different as soon as possible. And it doesn't have to be related to their vocation. So um, in, in, in the video of Glenn's student, he talked about percentages. He hadn't thought about discounts before. Um, in, in a previous uh, presentation, a, stu uh, a student was quoted saying, it's helped me with my work out my tax and wage slip. That's relevant to all of them, I think. So our recommendations. Start with the familiar context and model the use of the ratio table. Another thing I've picked up on through the presentations today is that these, whatever representation you're going to use, introduce it at the beginning and give the teachers the opportunity to use it and build their confidence. You heard Becker saying that he was skeptical with this approach in the first place. He's been persuaded of its value. Capture and value each learner's contribution, even if incorrect. I think this helps to change the, 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 the culture of the classroom to more democratic, where they have a voice and they're happy to share it. Um, and it might go a bit crazy sometimes, but again, thinking back to what Spiros said, it enables more humour in the classroom. And I'm sure that must help to reduce anxiety. Be patient, but persistent. We know that they're focused on trying to pass an exam uh, and, and just get the right answer. You need to be persistent in, in getting them to explain, bring them back to the context and don't rush the introduction of formal procedures because then you're back to where they started. That didn't work for them. 
don't make that mistake a second time. Give them the time to explain it. It doesn't matter how many steps it takes in the ratio table, as long as they're exp explaining what they're doing and they're happy with it. And finally, always go back to the context, force them back to the context to make sense of their answers. Thank you very much.